Hello everyone. What is the most precious gift you have ever got? Should a gift always be in a physical form or it can be in the form of emotions or gestures as well? What is more important, the financial worth of a gift or the feeling of a person who has given it? In our today's chapter, somebody gets a gift of chappal. Who gets that gift and who gives that gift to him? And what is the intention of that person who has given the gift? Let's find out in the chapter a gift of chappal, chapter 2nd of class 7. Before you read, Mridu is a young girl growing up in Madras. Madras is now known as Chennai. With Tapi, her grandmother, and Tatha, her grandfather. Tapi and Tatha are Tamil words for grandmother and grandfather. One afternoon, Tapi takes her to her aunt Rukmani's house to meet her cousins Lali, Ravi, and Meena. So there are many characters in the story. Mrudu, Ravi, Meena, Lali, Rukmani, Music Master, M.P. Punai, Beggar, Tapi being the main characters. Now let's read the story. So we saw that Mrudu has gone to visit her cousins Lali, Ravi, and Meena in her aunt Rukmani's house. Part 1. A smiling Rukmani threw open the door. Ravi and Meena rushed out and Ravi pulled Mridu into the house. Wait, let me take off my slippers, Mridu protested Mridu. She set them out neatly near a pair of large black ones. Those were grey, actually with dust. You could see the clear mark of every toe on the front part of each slipper. The marks for the two big toes were long and scrawny. So Rukmani opened the door because Mridu has arrived and Ravi and Meena, they rushed out to pull Mridu inside the house. And Mridu protested. She stopped. She said, let me take out my slipper. There is a custom in South India that you always take out your slippers outside the house before entering into someone's house. So Mridu took her slippers out and she took those next to another pair of large black slippers. And those slippers were grey. It, they were grey because of dust and one could clearly see the mark of every toe on the front part of that sleeper. The marks were of two big toes that were long and scrawny. Scrawny means thin so it suggests that the person was thin. Mridu didn't have much time to wonder about whose sleeper they were because Ravi dragged her to the backyard behind a thick bitterberry bush. There, inside a torn football, lined with sacking and filled with sand, lay a very small kitten lapping up milk from a coconut half shell. So Mridu couldn't think, she didn't have much time to think about whose sleepers were there because Ravi was, was in a hurry. He was dragging her to the backyard because back at the backyard, behind a bush, a bitterberry bush, bitterberry is a black fruit. There inside a torn football which was lined with sacking, a jute sack was kept in the football and in that there was a very small kitten, a very small cat was there which was lapping up. That means drinking rapidly, drinking very fast. The kitten was drinking milk in a coconut shell. The milk was in a coconut shell. We found him outside the gate this morning. He was mewing and mewing. Poor thing said Meena. It's a secret. Amma says Pati will leave for Pudu Mama's house if she knows we have a cat. So Meena explained that this poor thing, this poor kitten we found in the morning near our gate and it was continuously mewing, making sound. And it's a poor thing and it's a secret. And Amma says Pati, Pati is also grandmother in Tamil, will leave our house. She will go away to Pudu Mama's house if she knows that we have a cat. That means she will not accept that we have a cat inside the house. People are always telling us to be kind to animals but when we are they scream. Oh don't bring that dirty creature here said Ravi. So Ravi also said that elder people they always tell us that we should be kind to animals and if we bring one of those animals inside our house, they will just shout on us that, that don't bring this dirty thing here. Do you know how hard it is to just get a little milk from the kitten kitchen? Party saw me with a glass in my ha hand just now. I told her I am very hungry. I want to drink it. But the way she looked at me, I had to drink most of it. 
to throw her off the scent. Throw her off the scent means to mislead her so that she won't understand the real reason, the real purpose of taking the milk. So Ravi said it was so difficult to get this little milk from the get milk for this kitchen from the kitchen because party grandmother saw me with a glass of milk and I just had to tell her that I I was hungry and the milk was for me. Still she looked at me in such a way that I had to move I had to drink most of the milk so that she does not doubt on me. Then she wanted the tumbler back. Party, party, I'll wash it myself. Why should I put you to trouble? I told her. Now party, grandmother wanted the glass also back. So Ravi told her that she will he will wash the glass herself. Why should you be troubled? I had to run and pour the milk into the coconut shell and then run back and wash the tumbler and put it back before she got really suspicious. Now we have to think of some other way to feed Mahindran. Then Ravi said that I had to quickly run and put all the milk in the coconut shell. Then I had to go to the kitchen and wash the tumbler and put it back before she gets suspicious. That means doubtful. He said that now we have to think of some other way to feed Mahindran. Now Mahindran is the name of the cat. Suspicious here means doubtful. Mahindran? This little kitty's name is Mahindran. Mridu was impressed. It was a real name, not just a cute kitty cat name. So Mridu was impressed because Mahindran was something real, a real name. It was not like just cat, cute names of any kitten or cat. Actually, his full name is Mahindra Verma Pallav Punai, MP Punai for short if you like. So Ravi said proudly that its full name is Mahindra Verma Pallav Punai and in short you can call MP Punai. He is a fine breed of cat. Just look at his fur, like lion's mane. So he said he is of good breed. Just look at his fur. It is of like lion's mane. Mane is the hairy part around the neck of lion. And you know what the emblem of you know what the emblem of ancient Pallava king was, don't you? Emblem is symbol. So he asked, do you know the symbol of ancient previous Pallava king? He looked expectantly at Mridu. Mridu giggled. So he looked at Mridu but Mridu didn't know. So she giggled. She smiled or laughed. Think I'm joking? Well, just wait. I'll show you sometime. It's clear you don't know a thing about history. Haven't been to Mahabalipuram, have you? He said mysteriously. So uh, Ravi said, so you think I'm joking? You just wait. I will show you something. Now it is clear that you don't know anything about history. Have you ever been to Mahabalipuram? He said mysteriously. He said with mystery. Well, then our class, well, when our class went to Mahabalipuram, I saw a statue of his Tathas, 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 Tatha, etc, etc. Fact is, so Tatha means grandfather in Tamil. So he said that when I went to Mahabalipuram, I saw the statue of his grandfather's 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 grandfather. And the fact is Mahindran here is descendant from the same very ancient cat. Descendant means coming from the family of. So at Mahabalipuram, Ravi saw the statue of their emblem, their grandfather's 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 grandfather emblem. So, so he's saying that Mahindran is from the same family. The cat is from the same family of ancient cat. A close relative, scientifically speaking, of none other than the lion. So the symbolism is actually lion and Ravi is saying that this cat is a close relative of none other than lion. The Pallava lion emblem of Pallava dynasty. So Pallava lion is also the emblem, the symbol of Pallava dynasty. Dynasty are rulers of same descent. Ravi went on walking around Bitterberry Bush, waving a twig up and down. He, he had a twig, a stick in his hand and he was waving it up and down. His eyes sparkling. So as he was saying all this, narrating all the story, his eyes were shining. This cat is descendant of none other than the Mahabalipuram Rishi cat. And if I may just remind you, they worship cats in ancient Egypt. So he's, he's saying that he is descendant of Mahabalipuram Rishi cat. And if you know that they used to worship prey cats in ancient Egypt. Now he has set the connection to Egypt as well. How he loved the sound of his own voice. Meena and Mridu exchanged looks. So while Ravi was telling the story, he was enjoying it. While Meena and Mridu looked at each other, 
what does this have to do with anything mridu demanded so mridu asked what does it has to do with this cat huh i'm telling you this cat is descendant from egyptian cat god no goddess bested yeah that's it so now he has said this cat's connection to the egyptian cat god no goddess bested so well one of the descendant of cat goddesses was a stow away in one of pallava ships stow away is someone who hides himself or herself in a ship or aircraft in order to travel not being noticed by others so travel secretly so he said that one of the descendant of cat goddesses of egypt secretly came to pallava ship and his descendant was mahabalipuram rishi cat and that egyptian cat goddess descendant was mahabalipuram's rishi cat whose descendant is this mp punai whose descendant is the cat here which is with ravi mp punai whoop ek he shriek shriek is to make very sharp sound very pleased with himself so he was very happy that he has told all the story mahendran looked up alarm he had just been sharpening his claws on the edge of the coconut shell but worse than that ravi's awful whoop eek was a screech from the window so now mahendran looked up he saw he heard ravi's sound but worse than ravi's sound was another sound coming from window what a weird sound if mridu was startled startled means to be alarmed so this was a weird sound and mridu was also alarmed mp punai was frightened out of his wits and the cat was very scared hair standing on end he bounced up and scurried away into towards a bamboo tray of red chilies so uh, mp punai the cat also was frightened and he scurried scurried means to move in a hurry very quickly he moved towards the bamboo tray in which there were red chilies that had been set out to dry trying to hide beneath it he tipped a few chilies over himself meow he howled miserably so while doing so some chilies fell over him and he miserably said meow the creeching went on and on what's that noise said mridu so that creeching that harsh noise came again and again and mridu asked what is that that's lali learning to play the violin granted ravi granted means to make a low sound in an irritated way he told that it's lali who is playing violin she will never learn a thing the music master just goes on playing like a train whistling on and on while lali is all the time derailing going completely off track so he described music master's song as if a train going on the track whistling on and on while lali's song as if it is derailed it has come out of track so lali was not playing good music while music master was playing very nicely now let's see part second Mridu crept up to the window so Mridu quietly looked through the window Lali was sitting a little distance away awkwardly holding her violin so Lali was sitting a little distance away she was holding her violin awkwardly that means in a weird or strange way and bowstring her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed and concentrated so her, her elbows were coming outside and her eyes were looking at one place with concentration in front of her with most of his back to the window was the bony figure of music master so just in front of her was the thin music master he had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oil black hair falling around his ears and an old fashion tuft so his there were no hair on his head except some fringe of few black hair that was falling around his ear it was like old fashioned bunch of hair a gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck so there was a gold chain around his neck and a diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down down the stem of the violin so there was a diamond ring in it was shining in his hand as his hands were gliding gliding means move smooth, smoothly up and down through the violin a large foot stuck out from beneath his gold bordered vesti vesti here means dhoti so his foot was coming out of his gold bordered dhoti and he was beating time on the floor with his crowny big toe and he was beating the floor like like music teachers do with his toe he played a few notes lali stumbled behind so after playing a few notes lali followed but she was just stumbling that means following with halts she, she was stopping and she was playing 
him on her violin which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands since she was not playing well so it was looking as if the violin is not happy in her hands what a difference the music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly in the visible tracks of the melody it was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whistling along as ravi said so this was such a difference music master's song was so smooth like a train perfectly going on the track mrudu stared at the huge beringed hand beringed means uh, mark of ring on the hands moving effortlessly up the violin stem it was moving effortlessly through the violin making lovely music squawk there was lali derailing again and again lali sound was harsh she was der- derailing amma came a wail from the gate while they were concentrating on the music a cry they heard a cry from the gate amma o oh amma ravi send that beggar away cried his mother so his mother, mother shouted ravi that's a beggar it was a beggar sound actually and mother said send him away from the black back veranda where she was chatting so she said it from the veranda where she was chatting with tapi he has been coming here every day for the past week and it's time he found another house to beg from pati explained to tapi so they talked among themselves that they have been he has been coming here from past week and it's time that he should go to some other house mrudu and meena followed ravi out so while ravi was going out to send the beggar away mrudu and meena also came along the beggar was already in the garden making himself quite at home he had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk apparently prepared to take a little snooze so the beggar had already made himself com- comfortable he has spread a cloth beneath the tree where he was preparing to take a little snooze snooze means to take a short nap while he waited for the for the arms to appear arms is the offering that we give to beggar while he was waiting for the offerings to appear go away said ravi sternly so in a firm way ravi said go away my party says my party says it's time you found another house to beg from so ravi explained that my my grandmother is saying that it's time you find another house to beg the beggar opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one the ladies of the house he said at last in a voice choked with feeling are very kind souls i have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week so beggar looked at the children and he said that the women of this house has been very kind and i had kept my body and soul together to keep body and soul together means to manage to stay alive so i have been managed to stay alive because of their generosity generosity is large heartedness for the whole week i cannot believe that they would turn me away so the beggar said i can't believe that these ladies are just turning me away they are sending me away he raised his voice amma o oh amma sad his wail might be but it certainly wasn't feeble so his wail his cry may be sad but it was not feeble it was not weak it was strong voice he began in a deep strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly withered means completely weakened and came booming out of his mouth so the this voice started from his weak belly weak tummy and came out of his mouth with its few remaining teeth stained brown with beetle chewing so the mouth in his his teeth were with the beetle with the mark of beetle leaves ravi tell him there is nothing left in the kitchen call rukmani so rukmani said that now there is nothing in the kitchen and he is not to come again tell him that she sounded fed up so she was looking fed up fed up means tired and unhappy with the beggar and she said that tell him not to come here again ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar what his mother said had been easy for them all to hear there under the neem tree the beggar sat up and sighed so ravi did not repeat because it was audible to everyone there even beggar heard it i'll go i'll go he said wearily wearily means with extreme tiredness he said i will go only let me have a rest here under the tree the sun is too hot the tar has melted on the road so he said i'll go just let me rest because the sun is too hot and the tar of the road has almost melted that means it was blistering hot my feet are already blistered blistered means the the bubbles or boils that appear on the skin from burning or rubbing so he stretched out his feet to show large pink 
feeling blisters on the soles of his bare foot he was without slippers and he showed his leg which was actually blistered i suppose he doesn't have the money to buy chappals mridu whispered to meena ravi have you got an old pair in the house somewhere so mridu asked meena uh, mridu told meena that i think he doesn't have money to buy slippers then she asked ravi do you have any old pair in the house i don't know said ravi mine are too small to fit his feet or i'd have given them mine and his feet were larger than mridu's and meena's so ravi's feet were too uh, ravi's feet uh, his slippers were too small and even his mridu and meena's feet were also small for him the beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and tightened his dhoti he raised his eyes and looked fearfully on the road gleaming in the afternoon night heat so beggar was preparing to go away he raised his eyes he looked at the road with fear because it was very hot he needs something on his feet meena said her big eyes filling it's not fear it's not fair so meena said that he should have something in his feet it is not fair Shh, said ravi i'm thinking about it blubbering it's not fair it's not fair isn't going to help blubbering means continuously saying it's not fair it's not fair is not going to help let me think in 2 minutes he'll be frying his feet on the road what he needs is a pair of chappal so where do we get them come let's search the house he pushed mridu and meena into the house so he pushed mridu and meena inside the house so that he, they can search a pair of chappal for the beggar just as she stepped into the veranda mridu's eyes fell on the odd looking chappals she had noticed when she arrived ravi she whispered to him whose are those so uh, in the beginning the slipper that she saw she again pointed towards them and said whose are those just as she stepped into the veranda we have already read this ravi turned and glanced at the shabby looking shabby looking means not very neat looking slippers but sturdy old slippers sturdy means strong old slippers ravi also saw them he beamed and nodded these are the right size he said picking them up mridu and meena followed him nervously back into the garden so ravi picked them up and went towards the beggar and mridu and meena also followed here said ravi to beggar dropping the slipper in front of the old man so he gave those slippers to the beggar wear these and don't come back the beggar stared at the slippers hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder pushed his feet into them and left muttering a blessing to children in a minute he had vanished around the corner of the street so when he as soon as he got the chappal he hurriedly wore them and went away vanished from there blessing the children the music master came out of house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them sitting quietly under the tree playing marbles so when the music master came he looked at the children and he looked as if he don't appreciate them and then he searched for his slippers in the veranda where he had put them when he did not find it he shouted lali he called after a few moments she hurried up to him have you seen my chappals my dear i remember having kept them here so he inquired about his chappal ravi mridu and meena silently watched lali and the music master searched every corner of the veranda so lali and music master were searching everywhere while ravi mridu and meena were silently watching them he scurried around looking over the railway railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them so he looked everywhere brand new they were i went all the way to mount road to buy them he went on saying they cost a whole month's fee do you know so now he shouted that they were brand new and i went all the way to mount road to find those slippers and they it will cost it has costed him the whole month's fee soon lali went in to tell her mother rukmani appeared looking harassed with party following her so lali went inside to tell her mother rukmani she came and grandmother was with her where could they be it's really quite upsetting to think someone might have stolen them so many vendors come to the door worried party so party said that where can they be so many people come here and it is difficult to think who must have stolen them rukmani caught sight of ravi mrudu and meena sitting under the tree have you children she began and then seeing they were so rukmani saw these children and she started asking them question first in loud voice then she became curious quite curiously quiet and went on slowly then she asked slowly slowly have you children seen anyone lurking around the veranda lurking means 
hanging around or waiting quietly without being noted. A V, a sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows. So between her eyebrows, she raised her eyebrow and a V-shape was formed as it, as if she was suspecting the children. Another straight tighter on appeared in place of her usually soft, pleasant mouth. Rukmani was angry. Though Mridu, with a shiver, she wouldn't be so upset if she knew about the poor beggars with sores on his feet. She tried to tell herself. So Mridu tried to console herself by saying that uh, Rukmani will not be that angry if she knows about the poor beggar. Taking a deep breath, she cried, Rukmani, there was a beggar here. Poor thing. He had such boils on his feet. So she told Rukmani about the beggar. So said Rukmani grimly, turning to Ravi, you gave the music master's chapel to that old beggar who turns up here. So she told Ravi that did you give the music master chapel? Children these days, grown party. Party also heard and she just said, children these days are too much. Amma, didn't you tell me about Karna who gave away everything he had, even his gold earrings? He was so kind and generous. Then Ravi said that you told me about Karna who used to give away all his thing, even his uh, earring, gold earring. He was so kind and so large hearted. Silly, snapped Rukmani. Karna didn't give away other people's thing. He only gave away his own thing. So she said that Karna did not give other people things to other people. He only gave his thing. But my chapels wouldn't have fitted the beggar's feet. Ravi rushed brashly on. And Amma, if they didn't fit, would you really not have minded? If they did fit, would you really have not minded? Ravi said, Rukmani, very angry now, go inside that this minute. So Ravi said that my were too small, but if I had given my chapel, would you have not minded it? Now Rukmani in an angry tone said, go inside. She hurried indoors, brought out Gopu Mama's hardly worn new chapel. Now she went inside and she brought Go Gopu Mama's brand new chapel, which was hardly worn. These should fit you, so please put this on. I'm so sorry, my son has been very naughty. The music master's eye lit up. He put them on, trying not to look too happy. Well, I suppose these will have to do. These days, children have no respect for elders. What to do? And Hanuman incarnate. Only Rama can save such a naughty fellow. So, uh, now music master got Gopu Mama's new chapel. He wore it showing as if he was not happy but inside he was happy and he just said that these these children are very naughty and uh, he is like incarnation incarnation means rebirth or avatar of hanuman hanuman is a monkey god only rama can save such naughty fellow and he said that only rama can save this person now rukmani's eyes flashed it's she didn't seem to like ravi being called a monkey even a holy monkey she stood stiff and straight by the front door. It was clear she wanted him to leave quickly. So Rukmani didn't like his comparison, his, her son's comparison to monkey god. And she stood firm there, signing as if she wants the music master to leave. When he had clattered off all the new, of his new chapel, so when he has gone off noisily, making sound of his new chapel, she said, Mridu, come in and have some tiffin. Honestly, how do you children think of such things? Thank God your Gopu Mama doesn't wear his chapel to work. As she walked towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena. So she said, how do you children come up with such things? Thank God Gopu Mama does not wear chapels to work. And she took the children towards kitchen. She suddenly began to laugh and then started laughing. But he's always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and socks and get into his chapels as soon as he comes home. What's your Mama going to say this evening when I tell him I have given his chapel to music master? And she said that, but Gopu Mama is always in a hurry when he comes from office. He always throw off his clothes and his shoes and gets into his chapel. Now, what is he going to say today when he comes to know that I have given his chapel to music master? So this was the end of the story. The story is written by Vasantha Surya and it is taken from her book Mridu in Madras. So students, I hope you have understood and liked the story. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.